Hey friends, Krista here with Little Roots Ranch and it is the end of July and I wanted to do an end of July garden tour uh, and share what I have going on here. So I will start off with the people garden and give you a better look. And well, for those of you that remember, there are four gardens. The people garden is next to the house. The chicken garden is next to the chickens. There's the greenhouse, but that doesn't have a special name. There's the pig garden that's next to the, the, the pigs and the sheep garden that's next to where the sheep were. But okay, let me give you the tour. Okay, so in this first row right here, well, at the very end, as you guys know, back there, that's where I wanted to, <laughs> that's where I have been working on clearing and I meant to tarp it. I have not done that yet. It would have been excellent to have done by the time the heat wave came. It didn't happen, so it's okay. I will tarp it over the winter. Um, but anyways, these first few rows, the short rows, I have flowers in them, bulbs that I had purchased from Costco, like little set things. Um, but they're just starting to pop up. So I've also planted green beans in them. Um, you can see that the bean, there's a, a collard green there, but the beans are in the rows on the outside, just starting to pop up. There are a few little weeds and all that stuff. And then we'll head over to where kale everything is uh let's see here so here i've got some white russian kale um i accidentally purchased way too many seeds um and so i've got a lot of that and then i also grow a dinosaur kale which is really cool and so that's my dinosaur kale right there and then in that next row you can see it's kind of a mix of kale and so that's the calibration mix um, from Johnny's, but basically it's just, you seed it, it's regular kale seed, but you seed it very densely and then use it for baby greens. I've been picking off of that, but I think it's about ready to go. Uh, over here, these are daikon radishes that have gone to seed. I'm sure there's some big daikons under there. I didn't get them in time. And so now they're feeding the bees and the pods are actually edible as well. Um, over here, this thing that is far larger than me. They, these are my um, uh, parsnip seeds. And so if you see here, these are little baby parsnips. These were yellow, or sorry, orange and huge, but these are the little seeds there. I don't know if you can see those, but so I love parsnips. Parsnips are one of my favorites. Let me come over here. So here, the cabbage, turn you around, turn around. No, um, okay, so here it's looking a little bare because I've been picking the, um, what's it called, the cabbages, but, and then now the slugs are starting to get them. But here are my green, these are a smaller cabbage. Oh, and a random sunflower right there. There's some lilies in the background and more uh, green beans. Um, and then, oh yeah, so these are a smaller head of cabbage, Tierra. And then these over here are red cabbages. I believe, I believe those are called Deidron, something like that. And then do you see right here? These are my um, leek flowers and they're so gorgeous. Let me hop across the row, take you the other way. Do, 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 do. Sun is bright. Oh, there's a bee. Can you see the bumblebee right there? And right there? And right there? So that's exciting. Sorry, I'll try not to move the camera around so much. I get so excited. Um, and then here I've got some. So this is, here you can see is winter boar kale. It's such a beautiful kale. Look at that. And I've got several of those. And these are my nasturtiums. If you didn't know, nasturtiums are completely edible and they're delicious. You want to check to make sure there's no earwigs in there. And they're really good. So I always eat them. I probably shouldn't start eating them on camera. Okay, so, and then over here, I've got all of my borage. And here you can see the bees love them as well. There's a bumble right there, a bumblebee down there. I don't know if you can see 
them on the camera when I go to watch it later. I'll see whether it captured it or not. So I'll go through this path. It's really pretty, but I have to kind of snake through here. And then hopefully I don't make my bees mad. Sorry guys, just passing through. And so here I had some spring onions, but it's thinned out a little bit. Volunteer tomato plant. As you can tell, sorry the sun. As you can tell, I do a lot of a lot of things spaced together to create diversity. And when I get volunteer plants, I just let them stay like that random tomato. Um, over here, I've got some, look at these Swiss chards. They're so, let's see, can you see them? They're so big, just huge. Here's some rhubarb, some lettuce. This is uh, what um, Swiss chard, oops, sorry. This is what Swiss chard looks like when it goes to uh, seed. I've actually got a few of those here. Here's another one. And then there's this one, which is actually as tall as I am. Or almost, I guess. Um, and then this is a Japanese green Swiss chard. And I did a failure job at uh, celery. These are celery. Um, I didn't get them transplanted in time, more rhubarb. I'll take you over here. These are the starts that I, I need to get them in the ground. The um, cabbage moss are starting to attack them, uh, which I don't love. But these are the soil blocks that I started for my fall garden. And then here are, this is an experiment here. These are pumpkins that were planted and I wanted to test the boundary and see how late I could start pumpkins. So we'll see. Um, and then some rosemary and some roses that I'd stuck in there. And then coming around here, we've got onions. Uh, these are my Walla Wallas right through here. Uh, coming over here, we've got, these are some carrots through here and plantain and weeds. Uh, these are green beans as well. And then these are um, scallions. That, I don't know what it is. It just came up out of nowhere. I've got a lot of it. So if you know what that is, comment that down below because I haven't actually seen that. This is right here. The purple plant is red auroch, um, which is delicious. Tastes like spinach. A bunch of weeds. Don't even look at that. Uh, here, so, oh, there's another bumblebee some green onions that went to seed. I'll save those. And then through here is a nicely cultivated area of beets and thistle. So uh, thistle at no extra charge. Kidding, over here I've got a lot of thistle. This is one of my more out of control areas, but I actually like pulling thistle. Um, these are all volunteer tomato plants. I let them stay. And getting back here, these are parsnips for the rest of the row out. Towards the end, my rows get thin and they're <laughs> so sunny. I should have planned this better. Um, but the reason that uh, towards the ends, everything kind of drops off is because the rabbits. Uh, and then coming over here, these are little sunflowers. These will be chicken treats uh, in the winter. And this row is kind of diverse. I just, this is the row, I think I told you guys, I put about 5,000 carrot seeds in it, uh, like mid spring or so. And I had some germination, they were coming up. And that was before I had my cedar. So that was pelleted seed at a time, it took me all day. And they all disappeared, every single one. And I don't know why, or, you know, I, I don't know if it's the soil, or something wrong with my watering, which I hand water, I, I don't know. And so what I did was I put a bunch of everything seeds in there. So I think I put lettuce, uh, sunflower, corn, le uh, I already said lettuce, uh, re white Russian kale, because I have all those seeds, and a bunch of other stuff. And so it's all kind of coming in. What's growing best are the thistles. So congratulations to me. Uh, so here's some, you can see there's that thistle some lettuce and this is a smaller sunflower and then here these sunflowers to me are about uh rib height and then some more volunteer tomatoes 
through here. So these are the white Russian, this younger plant. And some more of those sunflowers. Interesting thing. Sorry, the thing's on my face. Interesting thing. Sunflowers are, uh, I might say it wrong, but helotropic, helotropic. What that means is they actually follow the sun every single day. So you know where the sun's at besides like seeing it. You can see that they literally turn their little head every single day and follow the sun, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and then coming down here, same row. It's There's some of that beautiful, look how pretty that lettuce is. Um, and then don't mind the weeds. I've got these weeds so bad. I think it came in with compost I got two years ago and I haven't been able to rid myself. But these are white Russian kale. Here's a red Russian kale. If you're interested, is the camera on? Yeah, okay. So this, see how the vein here is kind of like purple? That's, that's red Russian. And you see how this vein here is white? That's white Russian. So that's the only difference. They're really delicious. Uh, and then over here, I've got like, <laughs> this is really sad, but I've got like one little, little baby corn that isn't doing so well and all that. These were garlics that they didn't do well. I'm gonna plan to put those test pumpkins in there and see how they do. Um, and then I'm gonna take you up front and show you where I'm at with the greenhouse and then I'll go to the other gardens. Just a moment. As I was walking up, I realized I didn't show you some of my other plant babies that were planted for fall. And so this is my tray of babies. Um, here I've got Chinese, these are soil blocks. I've got Chinese cabbage. These are collard greens. Uh, these are um, Japanese Swiss chard, so the green one. These are bright lights Swiss chard, so they'll be multicolored. You can kind of see on the stem here, see that one's a yellow and that one's a pink. That one's a red. Over here, this is a vibrant red Swiss chard, this half. And then these are just another red I like. I consume a crazy amount of Swiss chard and so do my chickens and turkeys. So I grow a lot of Swiss chard because I'm a Swiss chard monster. Um, here is Casper kale that I've had zero germination. In the spring, I noticed I had bad germination. So I put like eight seeds in every single soil block, nothing. Uh, these are more white Russian. And then back here, dinosaur kale and um, scarlet kale. And so I'll show you that farm stand. Okay, so here is going to be the parking lot. Still working on that for when people come to visit the farm stand. This is that huge apple tree and you can see it's got some apples on it. So those are looking great. Um, here are some dahlias that are not growing as well as I thought they would. Um, here is the roof for the farm stand. And ta-da! Here's the farm stand so far. Obviously it's up and it has primer on it. The color is going to be like a light, elegant plum color. Uh, and if we come inside, so still working on it, obviously. There's going to be a fridge in this corner, this corner over here, and then shelving and sell farm stand items. So I'm really excited about that. I'm supposed to have that completed in June. Still working on it. That's okay though. <laughs> this was a rough year, but all right, let's head back to the other gardens. Me again. These are the, these are radishes that are going to seed. I did have my garlic in here and some more garlic. I had garlic in three different places. And this is some more garlic here that I left. It was really small to start with, but I'm actually gonna let these flowers go to seed and try planting it via seed. I've never done that. I've always used, like I'm sure you do the little cloves or whatever. So I'm excited about that. But over here, do you know what these are? These are carrot seeds or, well, I guess carrot seeds, but carrot flowers. And so you can see here, this is a new one, or a young one, I should say, that hasn't really opened. Here's like the next stage of opening. Uh, and then we get to this stage. And so here, you probably won't be able to pick out, I hope you can, but there's like seven trillion carrot seeds on there. And that's how carrot seeds are. So technically in here, boy, I probably have I'd say half a million uh, carrot seeds. 
Like, I don't know, I'm not gonna count them, right? Like, <laughs> and then here I have actual carrots um, that didn't go to seed. That carrot patch going to seed wasn't planned um, and neither was this one. So again, these are more carrot seeds. Uh, and you can see, let's see, can you see some look kind of more like, like purplish a little bit and some look more like white, like over here. And so these are actually purple elite carrot. And then these are probably, I think I have to look, it's like a Bolero or like a Nelson or something, just a, uh, orange carrot. I don't know if it's like the little one or a storage one. But yeah, so these were, <clears throat> I had the biggest problem with all my carrots going to seed uh, with the cold temperatures. So if you haven't seen a carrot seed, now you have. And I actually have, you can see up there, these are more parsnip seed and they're tall. I mean, if I stand this, this guy up, he's taller than me. Granted, he has eight inch start on me, but still that's way taller than me. Okay, back to the gardens this time for real. Okay, so we're back here in the chicken garden and I waited till the, or what's it called? Oh, we're the, the golden hour. So I'll look nice and golden. Uh, but anyway, so like the previous videos, the chicken garden is still half completed, meaning that I need to remow that and get out the old cardboard compost wood chips. But I do have all through here. Well, I, actually, I guess it doesn't line up. I need to make sure through here, lettuce, through here, the middle one, we've got our purple potatoes and our, um, what's it called? Uh, garbanzo beans. So just starting to get little flower right there. So that's exciting. Um, and then behind me, I've got more lettuce and a lot of this lettuce, as you can tell, I think is going to seed. Um, and then the tomatoes, my outside tomatoes, are not doing really good. These would be a cherry tomato, but hardly have anything. Um, but that's okay. This year was rough. Um, and then I'll take you over. So that was the chicken garden. And then I will show you the sheep garden, which isn't uh, that I also still need to well, I guess all the gardens back here I'm still working on in some capacity because that is what that is. All right, so coming over here, let me step over this big thing. All right, welcome to the sheep garden. The sheep originally were behind you. They're with a friend who has way more space for them, so that's good. So in this row here, it's hard to follow the line. Um, these are all winter squash. I think it's like a butternut acorn and spaghetti between like it's like 15 feet of each one um and then on the other side i've got cucumbers the cucumbers aren't doing so great um these are a second flush i've got my greenhouse cucumbers and then these cucumbers um and they go all the way down there's the cucamelons halfway down i'll show you a better picture of those so these are so teeny i want to show you guys one of these flowers where oh where's a tiny do you see that little flower right there like compared to my hand that teeny little flower um but yeah and so then this next row that i'm going to show you is one of those mishmash rows where there's a whole bunch of stuff uh towards the end we we're growing um evergreen blackberry unintentionally uh, i need to get to that um but here we've got turnips oh, i gotta make sure i line it up turnips there and then these here are carrots um and then those are beans i apparently grew them exclusively for the bunnies enjoyment so i'm kind of bummed about that those are my dry beans i've got other dry beans other areas but kind of bummed about that um and then i've got some radish mixed in there going down the row and then lettuce you can see right there and then going down the next row, I have dahlias, as you can see. It looks like I've got a flower. Is that a nasturtium? It sure is. I don't know how that nasturtium got there, but now it'll be there forever. Uh, so yeah, so those are dahlias. My dahlias, they're really not doing anything. 
Like I, uh, I tried, you know, and I feel like I planted, I planted them late, but that's kind of when everybody was planting them. Also, if you hear like grunts and groans, that's the pigs. They sound like dinosaurs. Okay, and so here is the berry patch. Voila! I've got these little blackberries, which these are intentional here. These are a thornless primo cane, which means that they fruit on the on first year canes, whereas most blackberries have thorns and fruit on the second year. Uh, and then there's two rows of raspberries. I think I've got some raspberries coming in right there. Yum. Uh, and then back there, I've got an unfinished blueberry patch. You can kind of see, got little fences to protect them from those wabbits. Uh, and then here are tayberries. They're doing okay-ish. If you guys haven't seen a tayberry, don't mind the weeds, but it looks, it looks kind of like a raspberry, but that's a tayberry. Uh, a tayberry dealing with a lot of weeds. Um, and then I've got my, so let's see, pig forest is back there. And so that's where the pigs are. Um, and then I've got a few fruit trees and rhubarb all along there. Um, working on cleaning it up a little bit so it's a little cleared. Uh, and then we'll come over to the pig garden, uh, which is just adjacent to the sheep garden. Here, this is some popcorn in this first row. is popcorn in the second row too, but popcorn in the first row. Um, I had that in with a bunch of Asian greens that went to seed and I wasn't on top of pulling those out. And so the popcorn was stunted, so that's fine. Um, here is the big row of popcorn. And then interplanted with that are dry beans that the rabbit did not get. So I'm really excited because anyone who knows me knows that I generally eat beans every single day. I am a bean fanatic. I make huge pots and yeah, I, tell, I always talk about it. I love beans. So I could never actually grow. I think I would need like 20 acres to grow the beans that to like support myself, but nonetheless. But here you can see this is intercropped and this is a bushing variety, which is why it's not pulling down my corn. The yield is a little smaller, but it's nice and compact and I like that. And I was starting to get some, you can see some in there, but Again, I can eat those at any point, but they are a dry bean. And uh, so I'm gonna let them get nice and big and then let them dry on the thing. Uh, over here, I've got, oops, zucchini. And which those, they're putting out a lot of zucchini. It's that time of year where everyone has zucchini. Um, interesting story about this patch right here. I thought it would be a grand idea because the zucchini when I transplanted them were tiny, like cotyledum stage. And so I transplanted some lettuce and I was like, oh, I'll be able to use the lettuce, harvest that out before the zucchini gets big. Well, I think, I think you're about to guess how that's going. Over here is just a little tar. I'm starting the, oops, there we go. Then I'm starting the next row there and then I've got it tarp till I can finish it to keep the weeds under wrap. But how my lettuce, well, let me go around the other way. How my lettuce is going with that is not great. So somehow the zucchini uh, took steroids and then I couldn't get to my lettuce. And so it's like popping out and like bolting and it's a disaster. Uh, and when the zucchini plants are that large, which they're huge, obviously it's like a mountain of them. Uh, but look how pretty corn looks in the background. But anyways, when they're that big, they're really sharp. So. I'm just like, well, goodbye lettuce. I'll see you on the other end, other side or whatever. All right, and still in the pig garden because this part that I'm walking on right now, I still need to finish. I have all the chicken manure. I just need to cut the grass, spread it out, add the cardboard and compost and wood chips, but I haven't done that yet. So non-greenhouse, because I'll get to that in a second. Um, this row right here, oops, right uh, there. That was where I had all of my peas. Um, I had, or what, well, and fava beans, but which were the best. But my fava beans, my shelling peas, my snow peas, which I love snow peas, uh, and my uh, snap snow 
shelling, whatever. All I had all the peas in there. Um, but the grass got really bad. As you can tell, that's why the area next to it is tarped. Um, and then I throw my thistle on it so that way it can't reroot. Um, but anyway, so I've basically finished harvest of all my peas. And so my plan is to mow that all down and tarp that as well and open that back up in the spring. Um, for these areas that are tarped, I'm hoping to be able to put garlic in them in uh, October, November, December, whenever. Um, but I need to get around to that and, or I need to make sure that the grass is, is down because I wasn't able to keep up on the weeding as well. And so it got out of hand and then I cut my losses and moved on to other stuff that I could still keep on top of, uh, knowing that I would need to tarp it. And so that's why it's tarped. All right. And so for here, you can see, where's my finger? That's just some radicchio that's left over. Uh, since it's been hot, uh, that's going to be bitter as can be. I can probably poison somebody with that. But the everything else that's there, you see the, oh, right there, all that, the whole air, basically the whole row, except for the green, those are baby beets. Um, and I've got the little yellow ones and then also big storage uh, purple ones. And so you can see those are starting to pop up. And then the next row, which is where it looks clear, um, I actually have carrots in, which they're starting to germinate. So you can kind of see those, I hope. Um, over there, I'm finishing with the Napa cabbage. A lot of that will go into the CSA this weekend and then be done with that. These are cauliflowers uh, in this row here. You can see this. This is what it looks like when cauliflower bolts and you don't stay on top of it. That will become pig food. That one got away from me. But most of these have been harvested out, as you can tell. Um, oh, hey, a little, little tiny baby right there. Um, and then these I've started pulling because the pigs and chickens, well, everybody enjoys all the stems. Uh, and then looking down this row here, you can see I've got lettuce planted uh, from seed and to enjoy, you know, in the, I don't know, like a month or so. And then with the white flowers, ooh, the sun looks so pretty. Um, the white flowers, that was uh, sprouting broccoli. It was sweet stem at Johnny's and I really liked that kind. It was really good, but it was hard to stay on top of. So basically saying, what it does is it gives a lot of like side shoots and stuff like that. Like, and you can, it just, you can keep harvesting like forever from it basically. Um, it's just really good. And so I need to get that out and I actually need to make soil blocks and start that. Uh, and then this is the last row here. I've got more of that purple cabbage, some things that I've already taken out. I've got some of my rhubarbs. At some point I need to come clean up this area, put down the cardboard and put down all wood chips and this will be like a nice border area. Um, I'm gonna get that done in the fall for sure. Uh, anyway, and then back there is just some more broccoli. I believe yeah little broccoli heads um popping up back there and so this is the pig garden basically everything's just turning over and getting ready for the spring um and then i'll take you to the greenhouse which oh it's been so hot i mean i don't have to tell you guys that but whew, i think i have been, <laughs> i've had so much water and so oh i did want to show you one other thing so I love your, so flowers, I meant to grow more this year, but it was a really bad year as far as weather health wise and all that other stuff. But one thing I did manage to get planted was my yarrow and I haven't actually grown that before. I have it in a raised bed, even though it doesn't look like it because I put tree trunks down, but the grass is kind of taking it over, but it looks beautiful. So I don't care. Uh, but do you see here, look how pretty that is. And it has medicinal benefits as well. See like this deep red one and like pinks and like kind of purplish or fuchsia or I don't know. I guess I'm not really good with my colors, but somebody there probably knows. And I've got my thyme garden, also known as a dandelion garland, garden, sorry. And here's some of my mint. I've got mint in a bunch of different places. Since I'm showing you the herbs, I'll show you on the other side. I've got sage here um, and then rosemary which I lost with the freeze over uh, last 
the last winter I lost all my rosemary and I was like, not again, because I love rosemary more than life itself. Also was the name of my late mom. And so uh, I just love rosemary. All right, we are in the greenhouse. Now it's a little bit out of control. I'm not gonna lie to you guys at all. Um, I planted some turnips. Uh, <laughs> I planted some turnips and I was going to get them all out. Kind of the same thing where I was like, oh, I'll get those out before the tomatoes get big. And then like everything just kind of got big. And so I'm still trying to like weed through that. But, oh, oh, uh, there's effectively three rows, single row, a single row, and a double row. In the back single row are uh, slicing tomatoes. In the middle one are cherry tomatoes. And then here is a combination of my determinant tomatoes. So like my, um, what is it? Beaverton from uh, Territorial and um, Oregon Spring, probably. I think from Territorial and Johnny's, so I had to switch over. And then my uh, cucumbers. I'm having problems here. My compost was a little thin and it's showing. But I wanna show you guys these daikons i think you'll be oh i don't think i'll be able to get really close to show you let me see here i'm starting to get little little tomatoes the cherry those are and a random lettuce there but can you see can you see those huge daikons they're like the size of my head okay let me get over here that that plant is huge but really isn't producing anything that was the the those two tall ones right there if you guys watch the mi gardener uh he had he resurrected that um what's it called that giant crimson red and so one of my farm families actually shared the seeds with me and so those are them and the plants are huge but they uh they don't have much fruit set which is kind of a bummer so these are some of the determinant tomatoes. I'm just starting to see a fleck of color. These are the beaver tin or beaver whatever. So they're like a paste tomato. I've got carrots interplanted here with the zucchinis or sorry, uh, cucumbers. Some more tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. I need to come through here and get the zucchini or the cucumbers because they're big. I usually just grab one and have one for breakfast and one for like not for breakfast i actually eat like two breakfasts so i'm not gonna lie to you guys uh and then over here again same thing i've effectively got three rows a double row a double row and a single row first double row is all peppers with basil at the end second double row is all uh strawberry and the strawberries are um crawling and taking over into the other ones and then at the very end i have got my uh uh asian eggplants so here are my peppers really these ones were getting chewed on by the rabbit and i'm getting fairly bushy plants but and the flowers are just starting but just really not here look at all this one's got a whole bunch of flowers this, I believe, are shishito peppers, which I love shishito peppers. They grow really well. I got this seed from Territorial. Um, but they're really good. I've never actually seen them turn red. I know that, or is that shishito? I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then in here, I've got a bunch of, here are the shishito peppers. Or they should be, I don't know. I guess I should check my tags before I say stuff. Uh, and then here, this is, I believe this is Tulsi basil. And then this is, um, what's it called? Uh, regular, uh, sweet leaf basil. There's a tomatillo plant. There's some other basil back there. I think that's cinnamon basil. My strawberries are getting their second wind. You can see the flowers. And then back there are all of my, let me try and make my way over there. It's not so easy. But let's see if there are, if I can see any eggplants. I see lots of flowers and eggplants starting. Um, let's see, how can I get over there? 
See, look at all these strawberries I'm getting. I need to come in here and pick them. Don't mind that thistle area. But yeah, and then let's see. See, I've got all the runners are growing into the walkway, which I'm not really ecstatic about that. Look at all those strawberries. I'm trying to see if any of the eggplants have a really, oh, actually, I've got an eggplant for you. How am I gonna get over there? I'll cut through over here. And this is actually really exciting for me because I haven't seen the eggplant because I've tried to grow Italian types. Oh man, oh, I know I'm gonna step on a bunch of snakes. Okay, so these, here is a small one, but you see here, let's see, can you see on the thing? I can't, there's that one. And then let me come around. Ah! This one's of better size, but look at that. Look at that, I didn't even know I had eggplants. I haven't made it over here. Oh, I'm such a bad person. Not literally, but I kind of neglected this area. And because I have security, and it's kind of cool already, so they may not be here, but I have a bunch of snakes, like a ton of them, garter snakes. And so I built this little thing here for them, but I watered, so they may not be in there right now. Let's see. Oh, nobody's in there right now. I was thinking it might be too cold for them. Okay, oh, crawl over everything. <laughs> okay, so I'm a sweaty mess. Obviously, I've been working outside all day. It's been 340 degrees, I think, but uh, nonetheless, so I wanted to show you what my garden looks like at the end of July. And uh, I'd love to hear about how your garden's going. If you have any questions on anything, drop them down below and uh, happy gardening. Bye.